All right, we are recording now. And uh, welcome everyone. I am Michelle Lo. I'm on the board of Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. Today we're going to do a virtual studio visit with one of our pretty new member, Dory Lambert. Before we start doing that, I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit about what we are trying to do here. And I know also Dory and I had some conversation regarding the reason movement. I just want to touch upon that. So EFA Studio is being, the whole building has been under you know, lockdown since March. Luckily, I think we're planning to reopen in July. But during the lockdown, most people are, most artists are working from home. So we really wanted to help the artists and promote the artists and the EFA as our board's effort. So each board member started to hold some conversations. And uh, a little bit background about myself. I'm an art gallerist and I also curate and do art dealings. You know, art has always been my profession and also passion, mainly because I feel that it has this power to go beyond nationality and personal history. But since the recent pandemic and also the Black Lives Matter movement, like many of my colleagues, I started to rethink the role of art. And I know Doreen, you and I also have a little bit discussion on that topic. I mean, I sort of wanted to leave with that I feel more than ever now, art can act as a bridge between social dividers. So on that note, let's start a conversation and see where it takes us. And maybe also you can, Dory, you can share something about your view. Um, brief background about you. You were born in Israel and then came to US, went to Pennsylvania Academy of Art and then Yale University. So tell us a little bit about your, you know, grew up, growing up in Israel and what makes you decide to come here and study and what, what's that experience be like for you? Well, thank you, first of all, uh, for having me and for this introduction. Um, so yeah, I actually, I came to the U.S. when I was 21 um, from Israel. Um, and I came here to do my undergrad degree at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Um, which is actually an institution that one of my high school teachers in Israel went to, and that's kind of how I found out about it. Um, and PAFA is very committed to painting from observation, painting figuratively. Uh, it's the first art school in America, so it kind of has this like long history that I was really drawn to. Um, and I felt that there was something about the scene, I mean, in New York mainly, um, and obviously like PAFA is kind of like folded into that, um, that was that to me felt like the the best context for my work um and where the most exciting painting is coming from uh, in the world so i think since i was really young i kind of had this dream of moving to new york and being an artist here um and like you were saying like i went to to undergrad and grad not in the city but then after graduating so many of us um from yale moved to the city and kind of joined this larger community of alums as well um and i've been here for probably like since 2012 um and it's been incredible i mean i think that um kind of making work with um surrounded just by my painting heroes both people who are my direct peers and kind of older artists that have been working here for a long time is just so exciting and the painting scene in new york is um I really feel like it's so incredibly diverse that it could really um, hold so many conversations at the same time. Uh, so that's kind of what really drew me, drew me to come here. So now you are actually speak, speaking from your studio, right? In, at EFA right now? Yeah, so um, I have been going to studio in the last, like since I think um, the middle of April or so. Um, and you know, I feel like being, being an artist, we're kind of, um, quarantined by nature uh, mm -hmm. so it was really about getting here um, that was the main logistics uh, in terms of like safety and making sure that I'm not um, I'm not at a risk and I'm not at a risk to other people um, and I've been so lucky to be able to come here and continue working uh, which I know has been such a challenge for so many others 
Right, right. So I see, you know, the work in, like, we can see it from the side view. And also I've been sort of following you since a couple of years ago. What I know about your work is figurative, quite bright color. But I started looking again, I think from your website, I saw some of the early work. It's quite, um, quite different. So I want to share some of them and see, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the work. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, can you see my screen now? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so these are quite abstract, monochromatic, uh, you know, type of work. I put this out, it's from 2012. Right. You were already here, were you? This was from my um, thesis show, actually, um, in grad school. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that grad school was a really productive time for me in the sense that I really rebuilt my entire practice um, and really thought about what, what is the way to express the ideas um, that I'm interested in, uh, in most directly. And I think that coming into grad school, I was making these really large uh, black and white works on paper. They almost looked like tapestries, like tons of patterns, like very sexual in nature. Um, and then in my second year of grad school, um, you know, I mean, com coming into grad school, I started embracing color um, and working more uh, rigorously with that and then also kind of leaving acrylic behind and going back to oil which was something a material that I've worked with since I was a really young kid like five years old six years old um, so there was something very much about coming back to um, a set of tools that I really loved and going back to oil and these first works what were you showed from 2012 were kind of my entry point um, back to just thinking about material and thinking about what oil can do um, and how it communicates uh, through textures, through color, through uh, composition. Um, and then I think later I kind of found my way back um, to kind of the work that you showed a second ago that was more um, what I'm doing now, yeah. Mm -hmm. I also noticed the uh, surface is also different from the earlier work. Um, well, I think it's funny, it was cool? almost, it was almost like a lab for me, like where I tested out different surface ideas. And I mean, till like the black painting that you showed, which um, I, does have like this hidden portrait in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's an idea that I kept going back to this, like just waking up, opening your eyes, like every, like you're having your eyes adjusted to darkness, kind of like taking color ideas and thinking of them physically um, mm -hmm. and thinking of them through like a bodily sensation. Um, so this painting was kind of just like an experiment of like, well, how do I move paint around to communicate that? Like what kind of texture um, would that visual experience have? So kind of thinking about how um, the material presence of paint, texture, color, et cetera, is connected to sensorial experiences. So I think I was very um, kind of in the early stage of, of, of investigating that in these works and then um, I still use that kind of texture, but it would be like a part of a painting instead of like an entire painting. Um, so I see, I see these as like seeds for future work, yeah. So now if I look at this, this uh, body of work, um, it's quite you know, representational. And are those uh, people, are they your friends? And how do you paint them? Do you have them as life model or you work from photos? Yeah, so another um, kind of big development for me has been uh, transitioning from working from photography uh, to working from observation. So around um, maybe six years ago, I um, stopped working from photographs as my main source um, and started having people into the studio and painted them from observation. So these small paintings that you're showing uh, were all made from direct observation. And then for some of them, um, like the previous painting of Sarah with like the dotted background, uh, that was used as a, um, no, the, the one before, sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one. Uh, that was used as um, kind of the, the image of that I used in like a larger painting. So I would do these 
paintings that function as source material, uh, but obviously they're also kind of works in their own right. Um, and then they would um, be parts of the larger paintings. So that's kind of how my process works right now. Ooh. Right. Um... Good, you're back. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but I, I know last time when we had a conversation, I find it's quite interesting when you're uh, talking about the transition and the kind of uh, process for you to, you know, move from just paint from the photos to this more observation, working with the real life uh, people and model. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, what was really meaningful is that um, was actually like the unexpected part of it. Um, so in my decision to, to um, move to working for observation, um, I really was thinking more about my drawing language and being more fluid and flexible within my um, compositions. But what really happened is a shift in subject matter where instead of just painting myself and my own experiences or myself with like other men, um, it transitioned to um, the world that I'm in, like who's around me, like what environments I'm in, like who are the people that, that um, are close to me. And it really became this, um, like my um, point of view became the, the subject as opposed to me personally um, as being the subject. So I think that that shift was uh, probably the, the most meaningful aspect of switching from um, working from photography to observation. Um, and also I do, I do feel that it helped me fold in, like just like formally, um, it helped me fold in drawing, which I really loved, into my painting. So using line, uh, which really offers like a, a sense of specificity um, that's really unique um, into like a larger pain, painterly compositions. So you mentioned about drawing. I look up some of your drawings. Um, these, some of them might be from very early. This is more early drawing, right? This is more yes. This is yeah, exactly. Um, um, so these drawings. Well, it's funny. This is this this drawing in particular I made when I was an undergrad, um, and this was my very first kind of encounter with um, personal subject matter. Like till that point, I was working. Um, painting landscapes and still lifes and you know doing undergrad stuff um, and I think it like something in me really clicked where I thought that there was finally a connection between the subject matter like this erotic subject matter and the process like the two amplify each other and uh, embody each other in a way that felt really true to my experience um, and I think that that realization that material has the power of communicating experiences as much as imagery um, was kind of mind blowing for me uh, and obviously still authors a lot of my decision making today like so much of my thinking process is about these things um, and these drawings were kind of like the very basis of the first time that that had happened to me. Mm. Um, and then these more recent ones uh, I actually did during quarantine like before I was able to go to studio. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm still unable to kind of work with models. So thinking back to like working with photography and um, kind of source material that I already had um, and thinking about it in new ways. So that's where these images are coming from. So the drawings are mostly are monochromatic colors. You just use a pencil. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, I think, you know, your paintings are very vibrant. Um, I want to use this as a backdrop and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about um, this experience you're showing at a very, very reputable gallery, UC Miller, uh, who is known for showing photography and you are really the first painters that the gallery started to work with. And this is a show that happened last September. Yeah. Um, how, what is it like to work with, you know, a, I would say medium sized a big gallery in Chelsea and what's the experience like and does that influence, you, you know, the paintings that you make, do you, when you make them, do you have a um, vision about the show, what the show will be look like, like tell us a little bit more about that process. 
Definitely. I mean, I think that this, that show for me uh, was such an incredible experience. And uh, first of all, I loved working with Yossi and the team. And it's really um, such an incredible environment to be in. Uh, so I feel very fortunate about that. Um, but for me, it was just a moment because I felt like my work had a lot more visibility since that show. And uh, I was just so overwhelmed by the response of, um, you know, people that saw it, other painters, friends, and kind of really communicated um, to me a sense of growth from the last show, which was, you know, what, what more can you ask for um, mm -hmm. in terms of like the, the reception of your work? So for I, I really um, just felt so um, happy with it. Um, I think that the scale of the work is something that, like you're saying, like knowing it's going to be in such a big space allowed me to really um, have the freedom to, to experiment and go as large as I want. Um, and that painting you're showing is like, um, I think it's, eight, it's 160 inches across and 96 inches tall. Uh, and then there are some paintings that were 18 by 24. So for me, I feel like the, the shift between like a large scale and, a, and small scale is really important. And um, I was just so happy to be able to show work that size for sure, um, which can only be possible in spaces like those. So, so this particular one we're looking at, that's uh, out of two panels, is that right? Yeah, there's um, kind of the biggest size that I can physically handle and get out of my studio door is this like 96 by 80 size. Mm -hmm. um, so when I make larger work, it's usually just like two panels. So they'll, they'll either be like two vertical panels um, creating a horizontal or even um, two horizontals, horizontals creating like a really long piece. Um, but that's, kind of, yeah, that's how I've been doing it so far. Yeah, I, I'm also really fascinated about the content in the work. Oh, uh, so these are all your friends. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually, both of these are of my um, partner. Um, and the, the one, the, two, the couple in the bed, it's, it's me and him. Um, so yeah, the subject matter is very, is very, very personal. Um, and it, like I was saying before, um, it all kind of describes my um, everyday experiences in a way, my community, the people that are around me. Um, and it's very important for me to fold in, um, you know, the giant painting that you showed before, like that's of my husband's um, family, for example. Oh, okay. um, so things that are uh, not even necessarily perceived as queer, right? Um, together with scenes that are explicitly queer. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for me to have that range um, of subjects is important because it, it's true to my experience of queerness, right? Queerness is not necessarily just uh, present um, in situations where, um, and like, you know, that have to do with like desire or sexuality. Like my queerness authors uh, or influences my relationship with my family, my relationship with the world, like how I dress, what music I listen to, like what culture I consume. Like there's just so many aspects of my life that um, outside of just, kind of um, sexuality per se that mm -hmm. pertain to having a queer experience. And I think that um, showing that range or that um, kind of the articulating how that might affect uh, every aspect of my life was really important to me. And uh, the show was out for a couple of months couple of weeks, right? Six weeks or so? Right, six weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from like the beginning of September, which was really so fun to have, uh, you know, like the beginning, like the opening of the season, like it was just such a oh. emotional night for me. And my family came from Israel. Oh, um, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stop the sharing and I'm thinking maybe you can show it because we beginning of the session we start talking about you know what is the pandemic like for you as artists and also the reason Black Lives Matter movement. Maybe you can um, show us your studio and talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the pandemic. I was just talking to a friend about it, um, and he we were kind of having a conversation just yesterday about what what does it mean to make work right now, like what. Like, obviously, we, we all have limitations uh, that are kind of um, imposed on us, quote unquote, like 
I can't have models or like getting to the studio is harder or whatever it is that each person um, experiences. Obviously, like some setbacks are, are completely devastating to many people. Um, and what does that mean? Like, what, how could that find its way in work? And I feel like we're still, for me at least, like, I don't feel like necessarily the content of my work has changed. Um, if anything, I think it was some sort of um, feeling like the rug could potentially be, um, you know, pulled underneath me um, in the sense of like, oh, what's going to happen to the art world? What's going to happen to like the viability of my practice? Like, I think that these questions actually highlight what's truly important to you as an artist um, and what, what's most worth doing and what, in what way do we want to spend our time? And I think that um, it actually is something that could really strengthen um, my practice in terms of, of really delving into the thing that, that I find mo most meaningful. Um, but it is, yeah, it's complicated. I don't think that I'm making like Corona paintings necessarily. I'm still definitely like kind of continuing with the things that I'm interested in mm -hmm. um, and just trying to kind of keep making work. Um, and I think that like what you were saying in the beginning in terms of um, the importance of art right now, like obviously we're also um, kind of involved in this moment of, of racial justice and um, advocating for anti-police brutality, accountability, reforming, um, you know, police systems, prison systems. Like, I think that for me, at least, it was a, as a, I'm, obviously I think I was, I was engaged with these issues, but I think now I also realized to the degree that I also needed to really delve into them, to them more deeply. Um, and I think in general, I feel like since coming to the States, like understanding race in America has been such a learning curve for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, um, and clearly I'm still, I'm still learning what that means. Um, and I think that for all of us, like, as white people, like, to take, um, to take responsibility, to be accountable, um, and to take each, to make each other, um, accountable, the institutions that we're in, the influence that we have, like, kind of really using our, our platform, whether it's going to be a conversation with family members or, uh, a more public social media platform, um, really take on the weight of, of speaking up and demanding a, cer a certain kind of reckoning um, that will bring us closer to something like a semblance of, uh, of, of justice or equality. Um, so I think obviously we're all thinking about these things so much Absolutely. right now. I'm so yeah, glad yeah. I'm recording it so that I can listen <laughs> what you're talking about. You know, I, I think we're all thinking about that. Um, yeah. Yeah and, yeah. and I think that art specifically, like, I feel like my work at least really comes from this idea, like, I keep going back to this, like, one Proust quote where, like, you can only, you can only know someone else through art. Like, that the only way to truly be in someone else's shoes is through, um, like, through, like, a painting, like, kind of mm -hmm. really understanding that, that, that someone else's experiences, uh, that art, art really brings um, to light uh, someone else's experiences or opens up a door for empathy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that along, you know, like contributing and protesting and being vocal and having conversations, I think it's, uh, and of course also like educating ourselves on reading, I think it's, um, for me has been, has always been like really amazing to, for example, you know, like read Toni Morrison, read James Baldwin, like look at, at artwork by black people, by people of color, um, because that's kind of the most concentrated essence of their experience and in, in an unmediated way. So I think that art could be, um, again, a tool for empathy, which is so needed right now, uh, and, an, and a tool for understanding truly what someone else's is, um, or like attempting at least to understand what truly someone else is experiencing. Brilliantly said. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think um maybe this is about a good timing to end but before we say goodbye i wanted to check with you as to what it is post covid world will be like for you and do you have anything upcoming um that you, you're working on upcoming exhibitions or projects yeah 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 i have a few projects in the works um some are going to be even this summer, but I'm mainly working right now for um, a show in LA um, that's going to be with M and B Gallery in September. Um, and LA seems to be a little bit ahead of New York in terms of like how open it is. 
Um, so hopefully um, it will be open for the public and people could, could get to see it. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm sorry I'm not giving you a virtual tour. I want to keep it a secret. All my work. <laughs> looking forward to see it in September. I hope by Very then, cool. you know, uh, everything will be a little bit more calm and hopefully either I can make a trip to LA that's ideal or you can show me virtually what you have there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so too. I hope I can get, make a trip to LA. <laughs> <laughs> I do wish you best of luck. How many work are you making for that? Um, it's three um, large work and one of them, one of the three is going to be like a double panel, so very mm -hmm. large. Um, and then several, several small ones, maybe drawings. Um, so a little bit smaller than the show I had um, in the fall because the space is a little smaller. Uh, but I actually have a very um, kind of there, I, because it's like fewer works, I, I felt like I really wanted to be very succinct. So I have a, a kind of very specific idea for it. That, Right. I'm excited to share. Yeah. Yeah. Look comes. forward to that. <laughs> um, well, I think we will say goodbye to our audiences, but stay a little bit. So thank you all for joining us. And thank you. Stay, yeah, stay tuned for the upcoming EFA programs.